Hi everyone. Uh, so uh, it's exciting today. We've just received uh, some sample printed cards of all the new card designs for the board game, which we'll be bringing along with us to the UK Games Expo in a couple of weeks, so that we can run demos for all uh, the people that are attending there. And we thought that we'd uh, show you the changes that we've made to the cards, uh, all the usability improvements and things that we've made, uh, and just sort of reveal to you the shiny new box of cards being opened. So. Uh, so these are using some of the same designs that we posted on, on Kickstarter? Yeah, so we're basically, the, these are iterations and improvements on uh, the card designs that we showed on Kickstarter and, uh, you know, things, uh, decisions that we've made on the basis of feedback from people that have been into playtest, uh, some of the things that we mentioned in a recent Kickstarter update. Uh, so you'll see, uh, let me open, no idea how the package inside, more packaging, great. Wonderful for the environment. Uh, don't want to risk writing anything. This is the excitement of unboxing videos. There's always lots of cellophane and scissors and swearing. Let's try and get the damn thing open. Oh, the one thing I always like about getting new printed materials is they always smell really nice, which is kind of weird. But uh, cool. So as you can see, we've got a uh, lots of exciting cards here so straight off the top these are our new opportunity card designs so we'll uh this is running thinking so one of the big things that we uh wanted to do with the latest set of designs was make these much easier for people uh who have different needs for uh, visibility uh so the old designs let's take a look here perfect um so this is comparing the exact same card. Exact yeah. same card on the old design and the new design. So you'll see there's, these are running uh, cards on the left-hand side and thinking cards on the right-hand side. So running, running connector and, and thinking connector. Yeah, yeah. So uh, exactly. Uh, so uh, you'll see the old designs we had, um, these white boxes up here with the indicator of the action, so the, 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 the suit, if you will, the marker on the top. Here, so th this the thought behind this design initially was so that you can stack the cards like this and still see what's all the way down. And so it works. That, it, wor that, it works very works, well yeah. for that, yeah. And it looks quite nice, and it shows off uh, Kaz's really nice art that uh, she drew for the cards that we think it looks fantastic. Um, so it, it gives a lot of visibility to that. But what we realised in playtesting was that uh, these symbols, uh, firstly, they're black and white, which isn't great for a lot of people. Um, and secondly, these symbols actually all look quite similar. Well, well the, these two look very similar. Yeah, so these are two different suits. Th these ones look a bit different, but, but they're still also quite small, especially if you compare them to what we... Yeah, exactly. Uh, so what we did was we... Uh, Line those up. We firstly uh, came up with this idea of using coloured sidebars. So yeah. now each action suit has a specific colour, so running is red, thinking is blue, talking is yellow, and sneaking is green. Uh, we also use these repeated uh, sort of symbol patterns to provide a different level of um, sort of symbol density and colour weighting on the sides. So it's very easy to tell, uh, even if you have a sort of uh, difficulty distinguishing between colours, you can see the symbols. Um, and further to that, we also improved the symbols for all four suits. They're more easily uh, distinguishable. So this is sneaking, which is obviously very different from this symbol, which used to be sneaking. Which looks too much like running. Exactly. So uh, this is yeah. very easy to tell apart from all the other symbols. And uh, speaking is also very different now. Yeah, so uh, this used to be the speaking symbol. So it's the speech bubble um, and there's some, some guy, which looks a bit like thinking. It's yeah, like exactly. Thinking. So you'll see here that... Uh, Th those two look kind of similar. Talking and thinking look very similar, but now the this is recognisably speaking, yeah. talking, but uh, is very distinct from thinking here. I mean, fundamentally, we've kind of made the game a bit easier because uh, before, it, it, before the game was almost a kind of a bit like how well can you... Can you spot, see the symbols? So spot, spot tiny symbols. So, for example, if you were looking at this card, then you really want to go and connect it to to a card with this symbol, and so you're kind of scanning through all the cards, and you sort of come up with like, you know, this one, and then you put it there. And and it's an experience from from playing it. It's kind of pretty hard to do that. 
Um, and it's not meant to be, it's not actually meant to be that hard. That's not yeah, that, meant that, to be that, the, the, that, the That's game. not intended to be the challenge of the game. Yeah. Uh, so we're really pleased with these usability improvements that we've made. So now if you have this card and you want to find a card to connect it to, it's much easier to go and see, hey, look, here's a blue card. And you'll notice actually that the... Um, the R yes. in the center of the card has been uh, tinted slightly to accentuate yeah. the color for the action that it represents. Yeah, so it's so. not it's not like this whole thing is like red, but she's wearing a red top and you know the whole scene is a bit red and here she's wearing a blue top and it's kind of a blue tinted thing similar here as well. So um you know these cards fundamentally really only kind of contain two pieces of information yeah, exactly. and, and we just wanted to make that a lot a lot clearer. It's not meant to be it's not meant to be difficult. Um, these are not the final versions. There's some things we want to go and change with layout and stuff. There's just some, yeah, some, some minor kind of alignment tweaks and things. But yeah. these are the kind of the current working versions that we printed because we're going to be bringing the game to UKGE for people to play. Uh, so these are kind of our, our latest uh, testing yeah. set of cards. One of the things that we uh, we're seeing here as well is that um, we wanted to make sure that all the artwork in the game is depicting a more representative group of people, a more diverse cast of characters, and that we had an equal uh, sort of balance of different um, gender presentations for the people we're showing on the card. So uh, all each different suit of card, as it were, each different uh, main action, now has two versions. So previously we only had one. Um, so previously we only had uh, a, guy, a, a, a guy, and now we have uh, one Male presenting one and one female yeah. presenting one. You know, and it's not, we're not making a huge deal of this. Probably most people playing won't notice, but the people who do notice, um, well, well, well good, I mean, good, the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the reasoning behind this decision was it was really important to me that anyone playing the game felt like they had the opportunity to recognize themselves in the artwork of yeah. the game. And that's something we've always done in Zombies Run. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I really, I, one of the things that bothers me about. Some things is, uh, you know, uh, board, very well-designed board games that are full of very scantily clad women miniatures. Uh, it seems completely unnecessary. It's unnecessary and it, it can be quite a hostile experience um, when the only depiction of you in a game is this kind of... Half-naked. Um, this object of yeah. half-naked. Um, so, what other cards do we have? Uh, so we also have uh, the zombies. So uh, following through with the uh, sort of visual improvement of sidebar design, we carry this through to the zombie cards, so we have different suits of zombies here, so much more easily recognisable than the previous versions, which we had. They were all yellow. They were all yellow, and they were all uh, black symbols on yellow. Again, not great for people with different... Um, so again, now if you're looking for something to, you know, it's like pretty pretty obvious what's going on there. Like, you know, you don't even need to look at the symbol. You can yeah, see it's, it's much easier to see. Um, it also has a nice um, effect of kind of making the table look quite interesting and colourful when you've got a lot of zombies involved. Uh, so here are all the different suits. Um, and Kaz has done a great job of kind of drawing a lot of really interesting and gruesome looking zombies uh, all over the cards, which is great. Cool. And so we have those. We've also made just some kind of minor aesthetic improvements to all the other cards in the game. So we have, uh, these are the, the character or plan cards that let you see uh, how many plans you're, avail or you're able to have as a group. So as a group, you can have four plans on the go at any one time. So these cards are just a nice kind of aide de memoire to allow you to kind of keep track of how many plans you have, and they have, again, really great artwork of... Uh, you technically don't need to use them if you're, like, a pro player, but uh, they look nice. It's, it's nice, and also, <laughs> again, it's kind of helpful for, as a yeah. team, coordinating how many plans you have on the go. Um, it's, it's a good thing to keep track of. Uh, we also have the new close call cards. So there's a couple of changes here. Firstly, we, we went from kind of quite a sterile, um, you know almost stock artwork kind of approach yeah. on the old close call cards, which I can't find anywhere, um, to this kind of more, it's a bit more characterful, um, it, it, more recognisably in our art style. And we also have these helpful right and left indicators. It, it's their left 
Not your, not, not your yeah, so your one, of, one of the issues that came up time and time again was when people mm -hmm. were identifying a part of the body in order to do yeah. the close call cards. And you get the close call cards just as a reminder when you get caught by a zombie. Yeah. And these are ways of like... Uh, so, so the way that the close call mechanism works, if, if people don't remember, is you draw a close call card when a zombie catches you. And uh, you say, okay, well, the zombie touched me on the right arm. And if it's red on the symbol, then you actually did get caught and, and, and you've been bitten by the zombie. So uh, I'm going to say right arm and we turn it over and the right yeah. arm is grey. So we're fine. You're you didn't okay. get caught by the zombies. But if you get enough close call cards, then you are going to get bit and someone's going to die. Exactly. Um, and then if they die, some things happen in the game. Bad, bad things happen yeah. in the story. <laughs> uh, so the, the key point of confusion there was, uh, when we look at this, is it um, the right of the card or is it the right of yeah. the person? So now, unambiguous. Unambiguous, exactly. Um, uh, the other improvement we've made is if you show the plan cards, so uh, the tracker cards. So again, we were working on a kind of an old semi dev art kind of uh, tracker. Um, which you know was very clear and had this nice kind of color shading as it as it went on, but we wanted to add a little bit more character to that. So uh, Kaz had these kind of increasing levels of zombie hand activity, yeah. which drives home the idea that things are going in this direction. Yeah, I, th I think most people probably got that, but but it just reinforces it. Yeah. Um... And the other cards in the deck we can't show you because they're secret. You don't want to show that. You don't want to show a clue for that that story thing. No. Well, uh, well, just the fact that it exists, you don't need to. You know. Yeah. Uh, well. Um, because because this is a big part, a huge part. A game. huge so a huge part of the game um, mm -hmm. is uh, mm -hmm. as you progress through different parts of the story, you're going to come across uh, various sort of puzzles and um, yeah, well, puzzles is the best way of putting it. Artifacts from the world that are included in your game box that you'll use to solve puzzles in the story. So these are two that will be players will get to use in the demo that they'll be running at UKGE and uh, in the first part of the game. So these are little uh, kind of story artefacts that... Um... It's not a spoiler, anyway. Sorry? It's not a spoiler. Not really a spoiler. Uh, this happens very early on, but... Uh, so this is just the very first and most simple puzzle that you encounter in the game. So one of the things that we're really proud of and I'm really excited about people getting their hands on is... Uh, the box isn't just kind of decks of cards. Uh, it's almost like a package from another world, and there's realistic artifacts from that place. So you might find um, those cards, or uh, the, the map for the game we're styling to look as though it's a real map of a real place. Newspaper. And other bits and bobs. Newspaper uh, articles. Pe newspaper articles, postcards from characters. Yeah. Uh, the, the kind of things that you might get um, if you buy an entry to a Zombies Run Virtual yeah. Race, for example. Uh, and those art artefacts will actually have a purpose in the gameplay and will um, provide these moments where you and all the people gather around your table are going to feel like you're actually there in the world solving the puzzles and, and problems that the characters in the story are trying to solve. Uh, and so, you know, it's not, you're not just buying a game. Um, you're buying kind of a story. Buying into a story and an experience. The experience. Which is, yeah. Um, there's still a lot of cards that we haven't shown, like weapons cards. We've yes. recently redesigned those. They're like much more interesting, and uh, they use a new kind of uh, iconography, visual language, the sort of fancy words of describing the instructions. Yep. Um, and those are the kind of cards that um, you get as you progress through the story, and your um, it's a bit like sort of legacy game kind of thing. Yeah, kind of le light legacy kind of element where you're adding more components to the game as you progress through the story, and you you know you find a shotgun in the in the game world, and then you get the shotgun as an ability uh, in in the game that you're playing. Um, and we're keeping those under wraps for now. Uh, yeah, those aren't included in the initial demo that we're playing at UKG, so uh, we're going to keep them secret. The other exciting thing is next week we're getting the first round of edited audio through. Yes. So we'll have a pretty complete vertical slice. Yeah. You know, almost almost sort of like feature complete. Um, the other thing is obviously the box. Uh, this is roughly how big the game will be. So this is, yeah, this is the, um, what they call the dummy version of the box. So when you're making a game, you... Uh... You get a lot of things sent to you from the people that are making your game. And this is the first thing we had, which is the dummy, which is nothing printed on it at all. 
it, it's just gonna be a white box. It's just, it's just, it's, yeah. That's we're we're going super white label. Um, yeah. So this is the size and shape and kind of, you know. These were the the cool so envelopes. Envelopes that can contain cool secrets and. Uh, this will be a map. It isn't a map yet. It's all um, this, invisible ink. This is laminated, so you'll be able to yeah. write on it. And uh, part of the gameplay is kind of keeping track oh, cool. of uh, who needs your help and where, and um, what you might want to do next, and where the zombies are, and all that kind of thing. Um, so this is very exciting to receive because it, every little package we get makes us feel more and more like the game is really here. It's really happening. And, and there's still a lot to do, but, but we feel pretty, pretty happy about the progress. Um, yeah, we're getting close. I mean, it's, uh, we've gone from um, making a lot of decisions about what's going to be in the box and exactly what it's going to look like to now we're just kind of running through the checklist and we've got this, that's done. We've got this, that's done. You, we, you know, the new card designs are getting close to finish. We're just kind of little tweaks now rather than the big kind of usability redesigns that you've seen. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're running down that checklist now and, and we're getting close to uh, receiving a, a, a box from the manufacturers that isn't just all white, it's gonna be all the final printed assets, which is really exciting. Um, it's been, you know, a couple of years in the, in the making. Uh, so it's exciting that it's getting closer and- I mean, uh, the, the, you know, it's 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 sort of hard to keep in mind because we've been working on this for so long. But uh, you know, it is a very original game. I I still haven't seen a game which has the amount and kind of interactivity of like the audio and real time nature of what we're doing. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, um, certainly, um, you you will not have played a, a board game with uh, the level of narrative that this has uh you don't want to play a, good, a board game with anything close to the interactive audio that we have um and certainly the thing i'm very proud of is how tightly connected the tabletop gameplay is to the narrative uh and, and the decisions you're making in the story so one thing that's been incredibly rewarding with having people coming through and play testing the story um because as we've been writing and developing the, the, the story we've been using text-to-speech just to give us scratch audio that we can play with people. Um, and it's been really satisfying to see how quickly uh, people start making decisions like, oh my God, well, we've got, we've got all these zombies right at the end of the track and we've run out of cards and we, we, we don't have time to go and save those people over there, so let's just forget about them. And, you know, we don't have to prompt people to do that. We don't have to um, explicitly make those kind of connections for people. Um, it seems to be this very natural thing that the state of the board game is influencing everyone's narrative decisions and the decisions they make in the narrative are changing the game and, and giving them new problems to solve, giving them new uh, tools to, to, to use and that's just been great. Um, we cool. really can't, we can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it and um, all, all you people to uh, see what we've been talking about for so long. And you haven't, if you haven't pre-ordered it yet, then um, we'll have a link. It's on shop.zombiesrun.com. Starts at thirty-six dollars, unbelievably cheap. Yeah, I we mean, are. It's just ridiculous. Actually. Cutting our own throats at this price. <laughs> Seriously, if you've got like this legacy, God knows how much that costs. Five hundred dollars? I'm not sure. Yeah, it was seven arms. It cost. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. Well, um, I hope it's been a good look for you guys. Uh, we're really excited, and I can't wait to show you more.